Hey guys, welcome to a very special Salem video where I'm showing you the sped up footage right now because this is something I wanted to get you guys started on because of a speed run sort of thing because I notice a lot of people are still spending days if not weeks just trying to get started. So in this video I'm showing you two hours of gameplay with a new character just well starting from just after the tutorial. So and I've got uh, sort of 10 points for you to follow follow where you can get started really quickly. So as you can see here starting out, uh, a good way to start is once you get out into the wild, you can uh, go port back to Providence and then you're safe in Providence from being murdered and stuff. So you can spend a lot of time gathering uh, resources and stuff like that, especially sunflowers and tumbleweeds. You can find plenty of those north of Providence. But once you've got some stuff going, you can then port back out into the wild and don't worry too much about staying where you start because uh, you just sort of have to go out and start leveling in terms of skills. You can start uh, doing a bit of gluttony, but don't worry too much about gluttony at the start. Skills are sort of more important and uh, you need to search every log and stump you come across because we need to start making a bit of money and uh, because to actually settle, there is actually no immediate rush to settle where you start and you can spend ages just sort of wandering around. But uh, if, you, if you are going to settle somewhere, you need to get prospecting because there's no point settling in a place which doesn't have the appropriate resources. And particularly, you do need a mine of some sort and preferably a mine near a, a body of water like a river or a lake. So as, as you can see here, I've been uh, collecting all sorts of things and leveling and uh, I sort of rushed essen essential, eh, essential mineralogy and then prospecting and then uh, Indian tracking so I could start crafting savage charms. And as you can see, I'm, I'm collecting quite a few savage charms here. I think I've got uh, about uh, four, four here. And then I sort of walked back to uh, 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 back to my lean-to and I basically sold those savage charms and I searched the player stalls to buy two pieces of leather and I found them being sold for 45 but you can find the, the price range of leather to be between 40 to 70 so it's gonna take you three to seven savage charms to actually get it but you can see I got some snake skins there which I could sell for some extra cash as well in case I'm a bit short but once you get two pieces of leather you can craft yourself a woo-woo wand which uh, I, I don't have quite yet because I needed to get uh, these myrtle oak leaves from Providence because where I was uh, ported out into the world I didn't really have it. But there we go, now I've got a woo-woo wand which I can then use to sort of search around for a mine. Uh, so at this point you can abandon your lean-to and you're now still continuing to collect resources and uh, j just sort of level your character, gain some proficiencies and stuff like that because you're gonna need settling eventually anyway. Uh, so you can go ahead and collect pretty much quite a lot. If, if you see me gaining skills here and there, you'll see me leveling quite a bit. But the main uh, thing you're looking for now is a place to settle, which is basically mainly you would want a mine near a body of water. The closer to the body of water, the better. Uh, 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 so you have a water source and a mine and you generally want to be near as many biomes as possible. So at least three would be good. You know, just being near the water, you, you'll have some access to, to shells and stuff. Oh, and you see that I came across an abandoned lean-to and I decided to, to set it as my homestead and I could port back to Providence and sell some more Savage Charms because we are sort of earn, trying to earn enough money here to, to buy a claimstone, which, which means we need a writ of homesteading, which costs 150 silver. And any extra silver can be used to go to expanding our claim. So right now you can see here I'm not coming across any water. So I'm, I'm just sort of uh, wandering around, but you can see searching old logs, you get plenty of resources and food and all of that, uh, but still no water. And one thing I, I you can sort of think about is that the more hilly and rough the terrain looks, generally the more west you are. So you can see here that the, the terrain is quite rugged and hilly. So I decided to s start heading eastwards because uh, it gets a bit flatter if you go further east because uh, Providence is on the east coast. So here you can see I'm heading east and then I start coming across a few new biomes and this is good. I'm not stuck in one big biome and this you, uh, then I come across a body of water and you can see Ah, okay. Now this is what I'm looking for. Uh, so 
You'll see me come across a couple mines and stuff like that, but one thing that I just really couldn't find, well, besides that abandoned lean to so I could port back to Providence again, is uh, I couldn't find uh, a lime deposit. But either way, here I sold a bunch of uh, 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 more savage charms, which I managed to craft. And uh, so here I'm looking, you can see I, I found lots of mines and water spots as well, but just no lime deposits. Lime deposits were surprisingly rare. I didn't come across a single one in my wandering. So building near a lime deposit is kind of important. It's not absolutely essential. I mean, if you can uh, find other places to settle, it's good. But without a lime deposit, you're gonna struggle building some larger structures and walls. And even in terms of uh, uh, clay production, because you need to make milk of lime. But I've ma uh, eventually you'll see that I found a sort of compromise, because instead of, uh, just so I don't have to worry about clay production, I settled near a clay deposit. So, so you can see here, I, I know this area is somewhere where I'd like to settle. You can see there's so many biomes all stuck together. You can see sand, clay deposits, uh, forest biomes, grass biomes, water, lots of pine trees. So it's a really good spot and I spent quite a bit of time walking around here, just looking around. And, uh, uh, well, th this is sort of, this takes as long as you really wanted to. I was just really determined to try and find a lime deposit, but there weren't any. I came across some pretty decent settlements, so I decided, well, they managed to make it without a lime deposit. So I settled for being near a stone deposit. At least get that, because if you want to build a stone wall, having a stone deposit nearby is sort of really nice. So here you go, uh, I decided to settle here, a nice little outcrop of land. This this beach here is not sand, it's actually a clay deposit, so at least I don't have to worry about getting lime to make milk of lime. And here I start to uh, set up my base. So I get uh, settling first, I need that skill so I can actually build my claim stone. And you, you'll notice I have already bought the writ of homesteading the last time I put it back and kept the woo-woo wand out so I can see where the mine is. You don't want to accidentally build on top of a mine. That, that would be make things difficult. And there we go. Uh, I claimed a bit of land, ported back to Salem, and sold some extra, all the, the snake skins and uh, the savage charms. And then I used that to expand my claim. And once you get a okay size claim, you should sort of build a makeshift fence, at least just to keep the animals out. So if you need to sort of escape from a snake or uh, you need to, to like gate stomp the snake or something like that. Or if you accidentally aggro a cricket and you just happen to not be doing too well, you, you want to run into your base. But again, makeshift fence is so easy to make that uh, uh, basically anyone who really wants to break in will be able to. But it's, it's a start. You can see I cooked up some nuts and foods there because my bars are still pretty low. But uh, cooking the nuts gives it a couple extra uses and makes them more effective. And there we go. We are just going around building this uh, makeshift fence all the way around. And this does take a little bit. But again, this keep in mind, all of this footage takes place within two hours. It, it took me like two hours and three minutes. Uh, actually, no, the footage you're watching is like two hours and one minute. Oh, and here, being near water allows you access to these reeds, which you can weave together and get fiber. So you can, uh, that's always nice. You know, easy access to fiber rather than getting milkweed jute or something like that. And there we go. We've got the makeshift fence up and your claim is set. It's about 14 by 15 tiles here. Doesn't have to be anything precise. And then I go up and, well, I found this whittler's bench. I did craft one earlier, but since there was one nearby, I just sort of took it. And then I decided to uh, make myself a shovel. You can see I can dig up clay there, so I don't have to worry about making milk of lime. And I don't need a clay trough because of that. So at least no lime, but with clay, then that's okay. So bricks are going to be very easy for me to make. And also a kiln. So then I want to, one thing you do want to make is a bed of some sort. A leafy bed will do. And you can see I use some of those reeds to make a reed basket. And for the leafy bed, I need some myrtle oak leaves. So I port it back to Providence, grab some myrtle oak leaves, and then port it back here so I can finish that off. And of course, the last thing that you'd want to do is to set up a sort of permanent fireplace. And again, be careful about not building it on top of your mine. There we go. And there we have it. We've got our first settlement all claimed and prepped and everything. And uh, skills are pretty decent. And uh, yeah. 
that's basically it. A couple tips, by the way, if you want some sort of infinite inspirationals, uh, is that uh, basically, if you want to cover all the bases, here are the inspirationals I would recommend. There's basically a flaming pine cone. If you get a pine cone off a pine tree, well, you can just sort of pick up the pine cone and right click it on a fireplace. That's on fire, obviously. And you get a flaming pine cone, which is a four use inspirational that's pretty good for cloak and dagger and sparks and embers, and along with a few other proficiencies. But do be careful, the four use pine cone will disappear after like a minute or two because it's on fire. Uh, then, of course, you could port back to Providence, or if you actually set up near sand uh, instead of clay like I did, if you set up near sand, you can dig sand, and sand itself is an inspirational that's quite good for mines and mountains, sparks and embers, and natural philosophy. Abandoned cobwebs you're going to find plenty of in stumps and just out in the wild. That's going to be great for thread and needle, hunting, hide working, natural philosophy, and a bunch of stuff. And some of the, uh, one of the easier craftables is a simple crucifix. You just need a few blocks of wood really to turn into sharpened sticks. And uh, simple crucifix is a good use to get your law and lore and faith and wisdom up. And then stray chestnuts do sort of cover sugar and spice and herbs and sprouts, flora, fauna. Stuff like that. And also law and law and hunting and hide working. So that should, all those inspirational should get you everything you need, except for perennial philosophy, which I sort of studied, I think, beetles to, to get those. And beetles are also pretty common. As long as you keep searching uh, tree stumps and uh, rotten logs out there. But there you have it. Uh, this is pretty much just uh, showing you in 10 minutes what can be done in the first two hours of Salem. And if you've been sort of wandering around and just not really progressing, well, hopefully this two, the, the first two hours, or at least your next two hours, can look something more like this. And uh, setting up right near a mine and a couple of biomes and a few resources like that, that means you're pretty much gonna be set for the future. So there you have it. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.